uh, a little introduction. Uh, I'm Rabin Bokolanje, and uh, I'm a student at Rice University. Uh, I'm a general uh, Mozillian and Mozilla contributor, and uh, right now I'm doing my research work with the IBM Research Almaden Research Center. So, what we are going to talk about today is a very simple thing which is already implemented in Android, iOS, and most other operating systems as part of your keyboard. What is that? When you type anything in your keyboard or write any uh, sentence or word, it automatically keeps suggesting you new words which may or may not match whatever you are going to write. So, this is a very basic feature and it's available in all keyboard modules. Coming back to Firefox OS, when Mozilla first launched Firefox OS, and it's right now in stable version 2, and version 3 is uh, on the wrong, and it's still going on. Uh, so when it first arrived, and uh, the primary market for Firefox OS was low cost market, and the devices were like very minimal requirement devices, devices which had like 128 MB RAM, and those things. And the whole concept of the operating system was, it was, ap apart from the hardware kernel level, everything was in JavaScript. So being a uh, citizen, uh, citizen of open source world, or a, rather open web world, is very important that you can write whatever you want, and the whole motto or the manifesto of the uh, operating system was that any web developer anywhere who can write in JavaScript or in HTML should be able to write an application which runs on the operating system and which runs as the first class citizen of the operating system. Now, coming back to how it was uh, implemented, so every module in Firefox OS was a JavaScript application which used to run on the device, which comes with its perks and pros and cons. So the pros of the, uh, like uh, how it was read that, anybody could go and write an application. The con was that, what comes with every JavaScript application, you have to make sure that it runs properly with that resource constraint in work, and the rendering engine was Firefox, good to get over. Now, the problem, when we look, looked at it, and it already launched into markets like in India and Bangladesh, the stable version, even now, the keyboard, has some word suggestion enabled, but it doesn't learn. So when I mean learn is that, when you are typing something in the keyboard, and you are typing a word <coughs> which is not in the dictionary of the keyboard, it won't suggest you that automatically, right now in Android or iOS. But the more you type those words, which are not in its by default dictionary, it will learn them, and it will start suggesting you, which was not the case for the Firefox operating system. Then again, comes another difficult problem. Uh, most of the markets where Firefox OS was targeting was not United States, and they were heavily targeted on localized builds. These localized languages were like Bengali uh, in Bangladesh and partly in India, Hindi, Gujarati, a lot of other languages which are kind of Indic language, and they are not exactly how English or Roman alphabets generally work. So. First, the problem was to build a suggestion system for the other language which will work with, with Firefox OS and will be able to ship them with the devices. Because the devices that shipped at the time didn't have any word prediction system for the other languages. Now, the main motto for, or the main motivation for uh, building this was make it more intuitive for the users to write it. Why? In English, we have 26 uh, alphabets, and they get pretty much mapped to the keyboard. In Bengali or in Hindi, we have more than 50 alphabets, which cannot be uh, mapped to a static keyboard, unless you have something like alternate key, which you press and it gives you more other, other options and those things, which makes typing in a mobile device very hard, and at least not intuitive at all. Which kind of pushes the user, okay, um, this is way too much effort for me. So apart from going through how we can actually uh, make it easier for the user, one easy approach was predict some words for them. So while they're trying to write something in the language, just predict some word and show them suggestion. That was the primary motivation of the work. So 
right now, what do we have in other platforms, and how do we like learn from them or get inspiration from them? We have SwiftKey, Swipe, Android AOSP keyboard, and a lot of other things. Among them, uh, the AOSP keyboard has open source source available. They have dictionary available, which we can utilize, and which we did to some extent. So. One of the hurdles of doing that was, since it already uh, was running the operating system 2.0, uh, the way we could do it was that build it in a module so that it is not a language specific part. Since even the English or uh, the English keyboard which was coming with the Firefox OS didn't have a learning system. It had the prediction system, didn't have the learning system. So first coming to how actually the prediction system at that time worked. So, how it works is that they have a large corpus of data, for example, which is a large uh, set of data where they have a lot of English words and everything. Then we run a specific algorithm or a script which actually creates a word frequency list from that. What is a word frequency list? It will just turn out that, okay, this word, for example, language is used this many times in the whole corpus of data I have. So we make a frequency list while we have that, okay, this has more weightage, this has less weightage, and we make a list like that. So when you are typing on the keyboard, if you type like, for uh, typing something L-A-N, the moment you type L-A-N, it will go through the list, uh, the dictionary, and it will find, okay, what are the weightage of the files which I have? I have language, which is maybe 500 uh, weightage. I have lanyard, which, is, which has the weightage of like 600, or something like that. So, and it automatically takes the more weightage and it shows you the words like that. That was how it was implemented and that uh, word frequency list we used to get from Google AOSP. But only for English and major languages, not for the localized languages because they even don't have it yet. Now, coming back to why did we actually choose to implement the learning part? So. Learning part actually gives you much better control over the Indic languages. In English even, it's useful, but in languages which are more localized and which have different dialects, they have words which are pronounced by people differently and even wrote by people, uh, written by people differently in different parts of the world. So in that case, we need something which actually learns from the user and creates a personalized keyboard experience on them. So the suggestions are more personalized in that case. So the plan we came up with, we plan to make, uh, we plan to come up with a module which will have, uh, which can be integrated with any language, so language agnostic. So you can just type in and go integrate it with English or Russian or anything. In some language, will have problem, but it will work in the same principle of that whatever new word if you are typing on it, it will learn them, and in next time you are typing the same kind of word, it should be able to suggest you the words be it for Bengali, be it for Hindi, be it for English or other language. Now, the suggestions has to come in a relevant occurrence. What do I mean by relevant occurrence? When I have <coughs> a new word which starts with L-A-N, but then something which is not in the dictionary, that should be, which that word, uh, even if you're typing that frequently, that should not come as a first uh, um, suggestion, or uh, then the dictionary words which we already have, depending on your usage. So if you use that word most, more frequently than the other suggested words, in that case it will come with a higher preference and show you as a first uh, suggestion. Otherwise, it will automatically weight that word with the words it has in its own dictionary and show you like that. So this I kind of already covered. So first, we uh, what we took as a test case was uh, Bengali. Uh, since I am a native Bengali speaker, so I was more interested in that. This was uh, around last year. So first, uh, building that, uh, building any uh, word frequency list is you have to get a huge amount of data which has like literatures or something uh, on that sort from which you can make the word frequency list. Now comes the problem. If I go through a corpus which is a uh, maybe textbook or books or storybooks or something like that, uh, which is written in a more formal manner, 
the thing word frequency list I get from that may not be that much accurate of how people actually write them in real life. So the data source I used was a combination of a uh, newspaper daily and a uh, TV uh, reporting web page from where the data was crawled. Since Bengali has two locales, one is spoken in India in uh, West Bengal and one is spoken in Bangladesh, uh, so BNIN and BNBD, uh, I went to both of them because both of them have different local words which are not av available or rather used in other locales. So we had to merge both of them. And the data source I got was from FIRE, which I'll ac uh, acknowledge later, which was a huge help. So once we had the data source, we ran a script through it just to create a word frequency list, which will plug into the system and give you a uh, suggestion on that. So how previously it used to work in uh, Firefox OS? So they had a data structure, something, uh, they had something called Bloom filter. With that, they used to use DRWG. Now, here each word has stored in the tree. As you can see, the tree has age 139. So these, uh, these are word frequency list. So these are the numbers, the weights we have assigned to the word. So if I have a word which starts from age, uh, the, um, beginning of the word and it's maybe the word is house has had so each each of them has and had had a like first uh, alphabet is h second alphabet is a and it goes on like that but with that it automatically puts in the tree and it automatically waits uh, uh, like which word has how much uh, occurrence and uh, on that uh, how much is occurring on the list which we automatically generated so that's pre-processed list that's how it used to work the changes we needed to implement without changing how uh, the keyboard right now works because in that case it needs a completely new way of doing that and we didn't want that. We wanted to modularize so we actually had to implement something which utilized the present scenario. So you, we use something called Ternisus 3 which is already there. I won't go into much the details of that but I'll show it like how it's done and just a high level detail. So like I told so we implemented one internal dictionary list on the fly. Whenever a user types something and there is a new word, it gets into that internal dictionary. And we have one pre-processed dictionary, which we got from AOSP or Google, or we created ourselves. That's a pre-processed list, which comes from my own dictionary. The moment you type new words, that gets added to the internal one. And it, the next time you are going to type it, it automatically assigns a new weightage to that. Every time you type it, every few, um, like whatever frequency you type with it, the uh, weightage gets uh, incremented. And every time, next time you are going to type it, that is uh, uh, compared to the existing dictionary so that it knows what to suggest and what to not. And coming back to how, so after we implemented it, so I am typing something which is so these are my suggestions this word is not an English word this is a name actually so I'm just typing it and you see the suggestions which are appearing right now and I type it once maybe twice and you see the suggestions which are already appearing so one of the suggestion was already there the other two words the suggestion was not there initially so I remove it I try to type it again now the suggestion is there uh, this I already did, so it appeared. This word was not in the dictionary, so it didn't suggest me anything. Next time, again, we tried and no. But the third time, it started appearing in the suggestion list. Now, the more user types on it, it will learn. And the more it learns, uh, it will, the suggestion will improve on that. 
Now, there are still downsides of it. So till now, we just handled a very small subset of the problem that uh, using the existing way how uh, the um, keyboard works, we just needed to implement the learning part. So this works as you have seen in English, and the same will work in other language uh, because the keyboard layout is same. Now comes to a different, uh, difficult part of what we discussed that uh, user doesn't need only suggestions, they need an easier way to write. So let me just go to the next uh, slide. This now will deviate towards how we actually plan, and this uh, I don't have a demo because this is still in works and I'm like, we can talk with other people if this will get implemented later on. So these are the techniques which we came up with, which can actually make life easier for the other local users. Now, the problem which we face are phonetic mapping and ambiguities, multiple uh, language input and output problems, uh, loosely phonetic nature, and transliteration of English or foreign languages. Now, what do I mean by all of them? We'll come back to these challenges with each challenge differently described. So like I described that uh, phonetic mapping ambiguity means we have like 26 uh, Roman characters or English alphabet in a keyboard which is properly defined. We have more than 50 plus uh, uh, alphabets in Hindi or English maybe. Now this leads to an ambiguous uh, mapping. What we mean by mapping is that when I try to type something, maybe like for the example D, uh, So this is a Hindi letter uh, or alphabet. So this pronounces as this, did and that. So all three are different. But in English, uh, if you try to uh, write that as phonetically, uh, all three of them should produce the same thing. So what do we mean by writing phonetically? So one of the uh, challenge, uh, like um, solutions which uh, industry came up with how to deal with the language ambiguity is that. Uh, when instead of like cramming all like 50 plus characters or for Chinese lot of characters into single uh, keyboard or fixed layout keyboard, come up with a way you can write the same or phonetically write the same uh, let, um, words using English alphabet. So I, if I have a word which is in Hindi uh, or in Bengali Amra, it uh, means us. So if I write it in English, if I write A M R A and put a space, it will automatically, it should automatically show me the Bengali equivalent of the word. But then again, what the problem becomes is that you can write it in a lot of different way. The example I just told, Amra, I can write A-M-R-A. -A. I can also write A-M-R-A-A. -A -A. So these two should provide me the same uh, equivalent Bengali uh, output. So that's the phonetic mapping ambiguity. Now, the loosely phonetic nature of uh, these languages makes it very hard to actually come out with one-to-one -one mapping. For example, here this word, which is called bachpan, which is like a childhood in uh, English. So it is pronounced as bachpan like this, not as bachpana, which would be the correct pronunciation language-wise. Now, if that is a strictly uh, phonetic uh, reference, we should have pronounced it like that, which is not the case. Now, different users of different locales has different way of actually writing those languages, and we need to keep it count. Otherwise, those users will feel like, okay, I am, I want to write this. This is how I write Janelle, or this is how I pronounce it. So they will need to write and want to write it like that in their phonetic nature which won't work out as they expect if we don't uh, cater for these needs. So, and it, the problem gets more serious when it goes to different uh, locales and different like uh, other areas, which we have a lot of different dialects and how they pronounce words. Now the approach which we plan to take or like taken halfway now uh, to deal with that. So first, we are going for alphabet mapping definition, which kind of deals with some of the uh, mapping uh, problems which we have for phonetic uh, languages. And then, then we have training data generation, and I'll come to each of them a bit later. So oh, I actually missed uh, the 
transliteration of foreign words because I didn't have site for that. So uh, this is actually a big problem. For example, in India or uh, in Bangladesh maybe, when we talk in Bengali or Hindi or any other language, uh, sometimes we use English words in between that. So when I am talking about Bengali something, uh, something I want to that, uh, tell, some, for example, I'm saying, uh, where, uh, where are you located or uh, do you have a computer? So I won't say computer as a Bengali word as well. I, it's a computer. So computer in that case, we are writing that in Bengali, but that's an English word as well. So this is uh, using uh, foreign language words in between our languages, and that is prevalent for almost all the language locales. So we have to come up with a way to deal with that so that our translation system doesn't immediately take the, that as a other word or as a foreign word or something and gives us a give a shout. <coughs> so the first way of dealing with that. So alphabet uh, mapping definition, by this we create some uh, rules, very simple set of rules using regular expression where we have that for these uh, occurrences of letters in a word, so not the whole word, so these occurrences of letters in a word are more prevalent, and this is how we are going to map it with uh, the sim uh, um, similar sounding other uh, Bengali or Hindi words. For example, uh, the one I showed uh, a few slides back, uh, in Hindi, da or uh, tum, these words, and can be uh, translated, I mean, uh, pronounced in English as D, 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 T, U, M, T, W, W, T, U, U, M, and like that. So we come up with a mapping definition where we map most of the common occurrences of these words in a separate dictionary, which we can uh, consult later on for more uh, accurate prediction. Now, since uh, how we train or let, rather build these models are based on regular expression, these are more or less language agnostic for most of the languages. Because you can change the rules or you can use the same rules for the set of languages, see how accurate they are or how badly they are behaving and you can adjust to that. So, the data, this is not running in the uh, mobile. So this is actually the time it takes for uh, our test data generation. Now this is just an implementation. Once the decision tree model is based, we can just like, uh, when a user is typing any word or any uh, text character into it, this will just take the input and go to the decision model. Instead of weightage, just giving you a uh, suggestion based on how um, how much weight it had, instead of just only weight, it will also see what context you are uh, providing in the uh, letter or, or what you are typing. For example, if I type uh, Ami, Ami means I in Bengali, so if I type Ami, then the most relevant words which occur after I in English maybe, what uh, other options uh, I can have. I, may, uh, I can go, I have these, these are the, like things which will automatically trigger on a second basis that okay, these words or these um, things are occurring most after I or after that uh, specific word. 
we use the same uh, method for uh, Bengali or the Hindi words where we have them and uh, we have a decision. Uh, so using this tree, it will automatically will first try to suggest those and then it will go to the weightage of what you are, uh, what we already have in the dictionary. Now, dealing with foreign, foreign words was more difficult, but we came up with a very simple and pre very primitive solution, which is not foolproof. So it initially just checks with the, our present dictionary, so we don't need a new dictionary. For example, if you are writing uh, anything on Bengali and you are in inserting English words in between that, it will just go through the English dictionary it already has for prediction, for the suggestion. It will just see if the word exists or not. If the word exists in that dictionary, then it's an English word. So it will just keep it like that. It won't change you, uh, try to change it. But if it doesn't find it there, then it will try to change it. But what happens if it finds the same thing in the English dictionary as well as in Bengali dictionary? For example, computer, I told. Computer will be in English dictionary as well. And then there will be a phonetic translation of just writing it in a Bengali uh, uh, alphabet. So in that case, it will actually ask them, uh, rather give him both of the suggestions that okay, whatever you want. So that was the initial framework we are still working on. This, uh, the what I told right now, that is all, all it, like there's a lot of pre-processing text and everything going on. So I still have not heard a like <coughs> go green from the Mozilla team. So this is something we are dealing with. Uh, if we want to implement that in late stage or not, and uh, so. Just ideas on how we can generalize is that uh, since everything runs on JavaScript, we are using, uh, in that case, we'll have uh, pre-processed text files inside that. We can implement the same thing in browser side, for example, editing in Wikimedia, so MediaWiki editor, so different language locals, they will have their own personalized versions. So the more they write on it, the more they write in Bengali, Hindi, or any other language, the editor will learn on it. Uh, I mean. The, his or her own uh, editor will learn more the words he or she uses and it will start giving prediction and kind of like that. That's a general idea how it can be generalized. So I really need to acknowledge uh, these guys. So uh, these are from IRSI India. So they gave me the big corpus data which, without which almost nothing would have been done in this work. I also uh, like to acknowledge the whole Mozilla team, specifically DFT Chayla, who got me into the system for the initial part and everything. And all their suggestions, how they actually had them implemented, otherwise I couldn't have even gone to the code, like how it is done. So I want to acknowledge that. Now, any questions? Thank you. Thank you.